In this video, we'll look at the molecular geometry for ICL3. This is iodine trichloride. So we can imagine that we have this central iodine atom and we have five different things around it right here like this are three atoms in the two lone pairs. And these are all pushing away from each other. So this is going to spread out and it's going to give us our molecular geometry. It might help if we visualize this with a simulation. So the purple, that's going to be our central iodine atom. And remember, we had three bromines. We had one, two. You can see they're spreading out at a third one. Now we have this trigonal planar. And then we have those two lone pairs. They occupy space. We need to add those. So there's one, two. So when we look at this, we see we have what's called a T-shaped molecular geometry. So the molecular geometry for ICL3, it's T-shaped. Let's go back to our Lewis structure and look at that. So we had five things attached to the central iodine, two lone pairs. If we couldn't visualize that, that one's kind of complicated, we could look it up on a table. We have five things attached. So that's our steric number, five, and we said there are two lone pairs. So we end up with this T-shaped molecular geometry for ICL3. This bond angle here would be 90 degrees or about 90 degrees. The angle across here, 180. We could also use what's called the AXE notation to figure out the molecular geometry. So A, that's the central atom, the iodine. X, that would be the atoms, the bromine atoms. We have one, two, three. And then E, those are the lone pairs. We have two lone pairs. So this would be the AX. 3E2, and if you look that up on a table for molecular geometry, you'd again see it would be a T-shaped or an approximate T-shaped. Since we have five things attached on that central atom, the electron geometry, that would be trigonal bipyramidal. But our molecular geometry, where we just look at the atoms here, we consider this T-shaped. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry for ICL3. Thanks for watching.